the SQL operator not in can be used to check whether an attribute value does not appear in the result of a subquery. In SQL, we have operators in and not in that we can apply to check whether a value appears or does not appear in the result of a subquery. Here you have an example that we check whether the sit of a student that we are currently looking at appears in the result computed by this subquery. On the next slide we have this in a bit more detail. The subquery result that is computed by this subquery is this table. So we select the sit, the student ID, from all the homework results. So we get all the student IDs of students that have submitted a homework. The result will be the table that contains 101, 102, and 103. In the outer query, we query the students table and we select the first and last name of all the students such that the sit does not appear in this table. So which of the students do not appear? Bart Simpson and George Washington do not appear in this table, so Bart Simpson and George Washington will be selected for the output. So as a result, we get a table that contains Bart Simpson and George Washington. Until SQL version 86, the subquery was required to deliver a single result column. Since SQL 92, this has been relaxed, so now the subquery can return more than one result column, and we can check whether a tuple appears in the table computed by this query. So we can check whether a certain row appears in this table. So let's try to formulate the following query in SQL. We want the topics of all the homework tasks that have been solved by at least one student. So we want to query the exercises table because we want to have the topics of the exercises. And we have to query the results table, so we have to join the exercises in the results table because we want only those topics of homework tasks that have been solved by at least one student so that appear in the results table. Okay, let's start by writing a query that gives us the topic of all the homework exercises. So we select the topic, we query the exercises table, and we want to say that the category of the exercise is homework. Let's have a look. This gives us the topics logic and SQL. Seems right. Next, we have to filter out those exercises that have been solved by at least one student. So we want to use in or not in. So in this case, we want to check that this exercise appears in the results table. So how do, is the exercise identified in the results table? The results table contains a foreign key that has the category and the number of the exercise. So our subquery could be select that we select the category and the number from the results. And now we want to check whether the exercise that we are currently looking at appears in the results table. So we check that E dot category and e dot number appears in the subquery. So this subquery uh, is fine. This uh, category and number will refer to the results. This is similar to the scope of local variables, but we can also make this a bit more clear, a bit more explicit by writing r dot category and r dot number. In any case, the result is the same because both homework exercises 
have been solved by some students. So we have that homework one and homework two have been solved by the students. So therefore they both appear in the result of this query. On the slides, we have a slightly different solution. Here on the subquery, we restrict to the homework results. Then if we restrict to the homework results, the homework is uniquely identified by its number. So we only need a single column number and we in the outer query also restrict to homework results. And then we simply check whether the number of this homework appears in the subquery. The result will be the same. However, let's discuss whether res the result of this query is the res same as the result of this query. Here, the same problem is solved, not using in, but using a join. So we query the exercises and the results table, and we restrict to exercises and results that are homework. And we have a join condition saying that the number of the exercise has to match the number of the result. And of course, because we restrict to homework in both cases, also the category of the exercise will match the category of the result. So in this query, we only include those topics for which there is a matching row in the results. So indeed, we include only the topic of homeworks that have a matching row in the results. So in principle, this is what we want, but what's the difference between this query and this query? Here we have a distinct. So if we have topics of homework exercises that appear more than once, for example, SQL is a large subject, so we ha might have multiple homework exercises with the same subject, SQL, then the first query will list these topics multiple times if they all have been solved by at least one student, of course. In this query, all the duplicates will be eliminated due to the use of distinct. If we drop the distinct, the queries are still not equivalent. If we drop the distinct, then the duplicate topics will be listed, but not only that, the topics will be listed duplicate also if we have multiple students that have solved the same homework. So if you have two or three students that have solved homework one, then the topic of homework one will be repeated two or three times for each of the students that has solved the homework. And this is not the case in this query. In this query, each of the topics will be only listed once. Independent how often they have been solved by different students. So clearly, this query is much better if we were interested in all the topics of the tasks solved by students. 